Hello YouTube, LJ Draco here. This is now going to be the Wednesday video that I promised. This is now going to be the first out of two reviews I'm doing today. I'm taking advice by a comment from my favourite subscriber. So, and probably will be forever as it was my first actual commented subscriber that actually stuck. So thank you again. You know, appreciate all the support you've been giving me. You know who you are. And yeah, so I'm going to do one movie review about a film that I really like and one review of a film that I really hate or don't like. Hate's a strong word, but yeah, in the movie community, there are films you're going to actually despise, aka Last Airbender. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be reviewing the 2002 Sony Pictures Spider-Man. So yeah, let's just get a bit into this review. Now, said so the movie came out in 2002. It was the first proper live action Spider-Man we saw. And let's just talk a bit about that. So when it comes to us fans of comic book movies, we we tend to get a little bit mixed in the critical stages of it because what happens is we completely split into two groups which is completely fan like fanning on it and completely just moving on it. Like you don't know what I mean. It's where the fans of the comics get really bitchy and complaining because the movie was nothing like the comics. Or you got the ones that's just like, well, it's meant to be the movie interpretation. It's what we're supposed to enjoy. And, you know, I, I side of both. I think that if you're going to adapt a movie from a comic, you should have majority the comic book ex uh, expectations of it. But it is the movie. Now, if, if, you, if you were getting exactly what's in that comic on a movie, no one would go see it. Or you get the few people who read the comics to go and see it. It wouldn't earn as much in the box office because it's too much like the comic. Everyone would rather just stay at home instead of paying, like, well, back in, back when it came out in cinemas, I mean, it's like, what, £12, £13 for a ticket? I'm pretty sure people would rather just read the damn comic which had more in the movie in that than the movie would have. So it, if you can kind of see what I'm trying to say here, it's like, I know for a fact, if I had a Spider-Man comic, right, and someone turns around and says, oh, do you know that comic that you're about to read? It's like, yeah. It's like, oh, well, they've made a movie. It's like, oh, cool, well, what's it about? Well, it's everything that's exactly in that comic. Word for word, scene for scene. How much does it take it? 12, 13 pounds. No, no, I'm sorry, I love my movies. But I'm not going to pay 13 pounds to see something in a movie when I could just read the comic, which would have hours of more in it than the movie can legally have. So it seems pointless, right? In order to, in order to enjoy a good comic book movie, yeah, you have to enjoy the movie side of things. So I'm going to get a bit into that, all right? I'm going to talk about the, the what was from the comics and what wasn't. So obviously, the cast and characters' names, right? So you've got Peter Parker, Spider-Man, right? And you've got Mary Jane, you've got Harry Osborn, Norman Osborn, Uncle Ben, Aunt May. You know, you've got all the normal characters that the comic books had. So they've taken that, right? So they're all the same people. They're all playing the same kind of characters that were in the comics. So it's, it's a, they've taken that from the comics. That's great. right? They've taken the same abilities for Spider-Man. They've taken the same just the same general aspect of, of the actual comic book villain hero side of things. right? So you've got Green Goblin and all that stuff. But they've done the movie twist, which is now Peter Parker, instead of him inventing the web shooters, they actually come out of his skin. Do I agree that this was a good idea? Um, let me think about it. Hell yeah! A lot of people don't agree with that, but I think from a movie standpoint, right, if you're thinking about this, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, okay, it's cool that this, this young teenager you know, built these web slingers himself, right? Yeah, that, that's obviously cool. But instead of seeing that in the comics for years, or in the animated TV shows, the electronic web shooters, right? Which, I'm sorry, but if you've seen the animated shows and you've watched the comics, they get fried and destroyed like every couple of episodes. These are in his wrists. The only way you could stop these from working is if you severed his hands. Which no one's going to do. Right? And I'm pretty sure they haven't done that in the comics yet. Right? Because there'd be no need to. Because they're only electronic web shooters. So I think from a movie standpoint, seeing this brought to big screen years ago, it was a great idea. Now, let's talk about the casting. We have, obviously, I'm just going to start off with the main person of this movie. And that's Tobey Maguire. As Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Now, is Tobey Maguire a great actor? He's not a great, but he is good. He is actually a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for. 
I've only ever seen him in two things. Spider-Man is being one, and The Great Gatsby. And a lot of people gave that film trash too, but I, I like him as an actor. He's kind of okay. I don't want to watch him in anything else. No, I don't like him that much. But he's actually a, a good Peter Parker for the first two movies. I'm not going to get into that, but this is about the first one so far. Right, this was this was what started that trilogy and made it good for... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Talk about the trilogy. But... I think they got they got done a good choice. I he was he was a good Peter Parker. Um, I can't say whether or not he was a good Spider Man, because in fairness, you know, I've got to give my credit to main man Tom Holland here, who done a brilliant job in Civil War. So yeah, I prefer but I prefer Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker. Right. I I said if I he developed his character so quickly because he went from being. The, the nerdy boy who didn't really get anywhere and who was just intelligent, but he didn't get many, many friends. He didn't really get any, like, girlfriends and stuff. He wasn't very popular other than with Harry. And Mary Jane kind of occasionally spoke to him. So he was just midpoint at school. And then once he gets these powers and these abilities and his muscle gains a, gains a bit, you know, like, he, he, he feels like, oh, well, I have to explore this more. And I'm sorry, but that's what every teenager does in school. When you start off this puny body and then you realise that your body can develop into muscle, which obviously that failed for me, but, you know, it's like, you get excited. It's like, yeah, well, I've got muscle now. I'm more athletic. I can just, you know, okay, did he take it over the top by climbing kind of like around the wall, jumping over the stairs to scare his aunt and uncle? Yeah, you didn't have to do that. That was just a show-off thing for, the, for them to do to show that he's got the ability, right? That didn't need to happen, but... He did develop his character quite quickly because I said he went from being the, the dweeby nerd, loner photographer to this kind of cool, charming, you know, faster, actiony kind of guy. I mean, he even he wants to get a car to impress Mary Jane, so he goes out to like a wrestling arena dressed up as a, as a, as a Spider-Man thing. Uh, well, him, uh, <laughs> he wanted to be called the Human Spider. Yeah, thank God that's not what happened. <laughs> but yeah, so he he challenges himself. It's like, well, I was this weak little kid, but now I've now I can I can jump really high. I'm really fast. I've got these nice reflexes. So why not show him off? And I'm pretty sure that any person in his situation would do the same. And he developed that for me quite nicely. So let's get into. Well, let's just go through the for the, the good people of of the movie to the to the villain. Right, let's leave the villain for the last. So we'll actually start with James Franco as Harry Osborn. His best friend, who's the son of Norman Osborn, which is the head of Oscorp, right? And James Franco, man, no one liked James Franco that much to begin with, but he's grown as an actor these past couple of years. I know he's mostly like used to doing comedy films, mostly with Seth Rogen and stuff, but I, I do like him. I liked him in the Spider-Man movies. I liked him in Oz the Great and Powerful. Uh, there's also another film that he's done, I can't remember the name of it, where... Um, He's like moved to London because, in fairness, that film he's in is in a park which is shot across my road, right? So it like, but he was like this guy that moved into this house and found out that this house had money hidden in the ceiling and he finds it and people come after that money. It's like really interesting film and it was it was showed an actual serious side of him. So I I do like him. He's kind of growing on me as an actor. But as Harry Osborn, he was exactly who he was supposed to be. He was also the nerdy friend of Peter Parker, the scientist geek thing, and. You know, they, they had that chemistry of best friends. You know, you'd think they were best friends. And that's the good thing about them. Then we had, obviously, Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane Watson. Now, I've only liked Kirsten Dunst in two films. Okay? No. Three films, sorry. Correction. One, I liked her in Jumanji. Right? Then I liked her in Small Soldiers. Okay? There's a random film that I like that not many people talk about, and that's Mary Antoinette. I do not know why I like this movie. It is a terrible, terrible movie. If you've ever seen it, you'll see why it's a terrible movie. But for some reason, I kind of like it, and I can watch that a couple of times throughout a month and still feel happy I've watched it. I have no idea. It's just one of those weird films that you know you don't like, but you want to watch it. She... Well, she had the ginger hair for this movie, so bravo to her. She didn't want to be blonde or brunette for a change, so good on her. 
Um, you know, but she also had that bitchy teenage attitude slight with I'm actually secretly not a bitch. I just have to act like it because I want to be cool attitude. So she did make it kind of believable that she was the Mary Jane she was supposed to be, you know, and I think that was that was great. I think that's um, my opinion. Mary Jane's story with Peter Parker is actually a lot better than the Gwen Stacy story of Peter Parker, if you know what I mean. Like, I liked Emma Stone that played Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. But, you know, I always prefer the Peter Parker Mary Jane story than I ever did Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker. I don't know why. I just I just did. So, she done a really good job of convincing of Mary Jane. Now, let's also talk about one of the most favourite couples in the whole Spider-Man universe. Right? And that's Aunt May and Uncle Ben which was played by Cliff Robertson and Rosemary Harris. Now, as you've already by noticed, I mean, putting up all these, uh, talking about these people, I've put up pictures of them in the movie in their costumes and as their normal looking faces and that. But I'm also going to put up, when I'm talking about them, right, a bit later, their costume designs compared to the comics. But as you notice, I'm putting up the pictures, so you always see, right, but, oh, Aunt May and Uncle Ben in this, the, the actors who played these characters, bravo, because they look like and sound what I always imagine reading the comics, what they'd sound like in them. I, I Don't get me wrong, didn't mind Sally Fields as Aunt May in Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. And I didn't mind uh, Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben in Amazing Spider-Man. But if you look at the comic book strip that's going to be here, and you look at the couple from the original like movie one which is here they are identical to the comic and i like how they kept that in they kept the look they kept the age kind of right where it should have been so it's good i mean because everyone says oh in the comics peter parker was a, a teenage kid right but if you look at that teenager right in the comics he is a buffed out teen like really i mean he's bigger than flash in the um spider-man one movie like, he is much bulkier than that. So, in, in fairness, people who try and say you want comic book accuracy, if we saw a buffed out Spider-Man, we wouldn't like it because he'd look too ridiculous. So, in fairness, you know, like, but they, they kept the comic book style, Aunt May and Uncle Ben looking good. But I love the actor who plays Uncle Ben in this because he was a much more convincing Uncle Ben. He was a much more convincing Uncle Ben. He was... It was he was purely into his role. Like I'm pretty sure that when he went home, he totally forgot that his name was Cliff Robertson. Like he was probably just went home. Like where's Peter Parker? <laughs> you're not Uncle Ben, right? You're not. You, you know, you're Cliff Robertson. Remember that. But and Aunt, Aunt May. Everyone's got to love Aunt May in, in the Spider-Man movies. I like. She's awesome. When <laughs> she smacks Norman Osborn's hand as he tries to eat the food before Peter turns. <laughs> like that's awesome. Like, but you know what I mean. So. It's nice to have these characters who are showing that they can actually play the roles of the comic book characters well. Now it's time for the villain, who, I'm sorry, but this guy has the most... He's got, like... He's got, like, pervert face, which is Willem Dafoe. He's got that face that when you see, you just kind of like... Ugh. Like, I know Family Guy made a joke about him hiding on this Dewey's bed, but, like... You could just see his face being the one that you see pop out from behind the tree to just stare at you. But... As again, Willem Dafoe, a brilliant actor. I've, I've, I haven't seen him in a lot either, which is weird. I've only ever seen him in like four things. Like this, Finding Nemo, uh, Fort and Our Stars, and Mr. Bean's Holiday. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've ever seen him in. But in it, but in this, he was really good. He was the angry businessman that was just trying to show that he could do something good and people were doubting him. And yet, you know, I, I loved I loved his voice when he became Green Goblin. Everyone goes like, oh, it sounds the same. It, 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 if you're not actually listening to the voice, you'd think it sounds the same. But when you actually do pay attention to it, you can tell that he puts a lot more grit and strain into his voice. Right, he puts a lot more strain. And he just, he doesn't want to sound too different from Norman, but he wants to sound sadistic. Which Norman just sounds sadistic in a business way, whereas Green Goblin sounds sadistic and I'm going to come to your house and kill you kind of way. You've got to give him credit for that. Now, like I said, the character developments between all of these actors to their actual characters were perfect. I don't actually remember a 
scene in the first film that it kind of embarrassed me to watch it. I don't remember a scene at all that made me kind of go, well, this could be a bad movie. Because I actually enjoyed the first Spider-Man all the way through. And the first time I ever watched this, right, it was on VHS. We were doing a summer, a summer holidays movie night, right? And as kids, we all got to chose a, a video, right? And we, got to, we basically got to watch, whoever chose first got to watch theirs first. And we watched like five to six movies in one night, right? And that was the first one. I chose Spider-Man because I wanted to see it. And I loved it. It is actually a really great movie. Sony did do a great job for the first Spider-Man movie. And a lot of people turn around and say, oh, you know, number two is so much better. Yes, number two has a better villain. It's not a better movie. I'll just clarify that now. It is nowhere near a better movie. It was just a better villain. But Spider-Man 1 had so much in it. Because you got to see... I know everyone goes, oh, we're tired of seeing origin stories. But Spider-Man 1 did the origin story really well. You know, it did it extremely well. I mean, the, the bit in the car... Like, when Uncle Ben like, I know I'm not your father. Well, start pretending to be. Like, that That was... That was really emotional. I don't know who agrees with this, but that was more emotional than the Andrew Garfield, Martin Sheen one in Amazement with the, how dare I, how dare you? Like, I'm so... I, I thought the cut was more emotional. You know? Because, like, you could see the pure hurt in, you know... Cliff Robertson's face and Uncle Ben's face, you know, you could see it. And it was a powerful moment. And, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know why, but I really, really, really did enjoy this movie. Now let's get on to something. I've talked about the characters. I've talked about their um, developments as their characters and uh, the actors to the characters. Let's talk about the villain substance, right? Now, if no one knows what I mean by this, these are all new words I'm coming up with for this, right? So if you're lost, just pay attention because you're on something. Villain substance is when you look at a character who's meant to be a villain in the movie, can you tell they were going to be a villain? Not just because of the comics. If you haven't seen the comics and you just watched the movie, so for people who haven't seen Spider-Man, like the comics or, or watch the animated series and just go, oh, there's a Spider-Man movie, I'll pick this up, put it in. Do you know by looking at the character whether or not he is going to be the villain? Or whether or not you think he's the good guy. And then it's kind of like when you find out he's the bad guy, you're kind of like, <gasps> because for me, I didn't, I, I never read a Spider-Man comic growing up. Like before the actual movie came out, I never read the comics of Spider-Man. I was always an Iron Man comic book fan. I never read anything else. That and Ghost Rider. I never read Spider-Man. Okay. So watching that movie made me go, I really want to read the comics. And that's when I started actually reading the comics and watching the animated shows. I started developing more into that. So you kind of go like, oh, that's why like Norman Osborn's been green cop. Oh, okay, that explains it, right? But watching that film, I did exactly what all new people to Spider-Man done was when I saw him become Green Goblin, I went, <gasps> and it shocked me because I knew he was obviously going to be something, but I didn't know he was going to be the big, bad villain, who apparently is the main villain in the Amazing Spider-Man and the Spider-Man universe. Green Goblin's always been the first definitive villain for Spider-Man. So, the substance in that movie was, it was good. Because it started off as the, I like my son, but I'm also disappointed. You know, um, I like my firm, but they don't deserve me because I'm the best. And then when he gets turned down, it's like, do you know how much I've sacrificed it? Where it's like, oh, I've given all of my life and you guys have given nothing kind of attitude. So you can tell throughout the beginning that he is going to be a complete dick and it works you kind of like that you're like yeah you you'd be a dick you're 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 a good movie dick all right so so like you, you you kind of get into it so the substance of that villain was brilliant and all the way through green goblin he didn't he didn't break he didn't break as the villain he didn't like as the villain as green goblin he didn't actually break he pretended to break but he didn't break right he didn't do it like the bit was on the floor and he's like, help me, I'm sick. And he's doing a thing. And then, like, Parker will stand up and, like, said that he, like, tried to kill Aunt May. And he'll stand up and go, Godspeed, Spider-Man. And then, like, get the thing to come towards him. Like, he didn't break. He pretend he acted. It was freaking awesome. A lot of people probably don't agree with this. They probably A lot of people don't like this movie. But if you have seen this movie, you will enjoy it. It's actually a really fun movie.
what I get for living on a main road. Anyway, <laughs> right, now let's do the main part I want to talk about, and this is now the costume design points. Now, we're going to be showing images of the movie characters in their costumes. So not, not like everyone. So not like thing, but I'm just going to show like the actual costume design between Green Goblin and Spider-Man, right? So the movie one is going to be here and the comic one is going to be here, okay? So this is Spider-Man's outfit. It's not exactly dead on point to the comic because also in, I think if it is the original comics, I know he had that webbing under his armpits, but if we'd seen that in this movie growing up in 2002, you would have just gone, why? Like, that, there's no need for that. And I'm glad they didn't do it, because that would have just been silly for me, especially getting new into Spider-Man, because I would have gone, I understand the webs, I understand the climbing up the walls, but I do not for a start understand why there's webbing under his armpits. That would just confuse me entirely. So I'm glad they didn't stick to that. But as you can see, the colour schemes and the, even the webbing on the actual outfit looks genuinely decent. You know, so I'm kind of glad they did this outfit. I much prefer this outfit to the Andrew Garfield outfit. The Andrew Garfield Spider-Man outfit looks too small. Like, the red bit doesn't consist properly with the rest of the outfit. Like, the red bit slowly goes down, like, here. And the red blue is there. Whereas this one, like, the red only kind of, like, comes out quite far in and then goes out in the blue. So I do really like... The Tobey Maguire movie outfit. I really do enjoy it. Now, we all know that Green Goblin didn't look anything like his comic counterpart suit, right? We already know that. But this is the point I tried to make earlier. This is the movie version of Spider-Man. We don't want to see green tights and like a purple dress and a little wizard's hat. We don't want to see that. We want to see... What Green Goblin would look like with the technology we had in 2002. And that's exactly what we were given. That was brilliant. That was perfect. Right? So, let's just not bother having to go in. They've done a great job. Okay? Anyway, guys, that's practically the whole movie review. I am going to be a bit annoying now because I forgot to mention one character I absolutely loved in this movie... And is probably my favourite character in all the Spider-Man movies. So I did, I'm sorry I forgot to mention him. I'm going to mention him now, and that's J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> that man is awesome. I'm sorry, but he's awesome. Right, he just, he absolutely hates Spider-Man. And he obviously doesn't like Peter Parker. He knows Peter Parker brings in the money, but he doesn't like him that much. And I love his attitude towards his secretaries, his staff. It's just absolutely hilarious. Gotta love him. So that is it for the review. I'm going to give this movie a rating. And I think it's a very well deserved rating. It's not going to be the best rating I've ever possibly given. But it does deserve it. And it's going to get a B plus. Just because the story was good. The character arcs were good. You know, the the, the scripting and, and the uh, cinematography was good. Uh, watching that film on Blu-ray, by the way, looks fantastic. So... If you've only seen it on DVD or VHS and you haven't seen it on Blu-ray, but you've seen the Blu-ray for cheap, get it. It is nice to watch it in high def because it just looks like a totally different experience. Anyway, guys, that is it for the first review for this Wednesday's two reviews of the movie that I liked. So please do not forget to subscribe to show you support to my channel. And also don't forget to strike that like for future videos. And I will see you next time.